Hello, I'm Dr. Marty Ross. In this video, learn how I diagnose Bartonella. Um, generally, I don't rely on testing because it's, it's pretty poor, actually. Um, usually, I would make my decisions to treat Bartonella in my practice based on what the symptoms tell me. For more information after you see the video in terms of testing or specific list of symptoms, click on a link to, the, uh, to an article in the description that I have for the video. Treat Lyme is supported by purchases you make through Marty Ross MD Supplements. So in my webinars, I'm asked frequently, how does one diagnose Bartonella? All right, it's a good question. Uh, the problem with Bartonella is we've got multiple strains of the germ. Uh, by some estimates, there may be about 30 different strains of which 15 of those infect humans. Now, most doctors are gonna do a test called an IFA test. That's a fancy way of doing an antibody test to see if your immune system is making antibodies that attach to the germ. The biggest problem with that test, and there's a number of them, but the biggest one is that again, we have 15 strains that infect humans, but IFA testing is only available for maybe a few of those strains, okay? So even if you were to do an IFA test and it came back negative, it doesn't mean you don't have the, the infection, it just may mean that you've got a strain that the, um, that the testing couldn't detect, okay? So to help with that problem, there's another lab, uh, Galaxy Labs, that specializes in Bartonella testing that has developed a, a newer uh, way to do this, and that is they use a technique called a PCR. PCR is a way that we can look to see, is there the DNA of the germ in your blood, all right? And what uh, Galaxy has done is they actually have enhanced that process. They have an enhanced PCR test uh, what they do is they take your blood and they grow it on a, on, a, on a lab, in a laboratory, in a special medium that helps grow a lot of the germs so that when they do the PCR test, there's more DNA available to attack. Okay, all right. All right. Now, their test is better than the IFA test because it actually looks to see if you have uh, DNA from the 15 strains that we know that infect humans. Okay, all right. So that's good. The problem with their test is that they've never done testing to figure out how good is it at detecting uh, Bartonella uh, infections when it's in you. And there, there's a lot of technical reasons they haven't been able to do that, but the fact is they haven't been able to do that. So we really don't know how good is this test at finding Bartonella in a person when it's there, okay? It also tends to be an expensive test as well too, all right? So for that reason, um, I because we don't know really how reliable it is at finding it. Now, granted, when the test comes back um, and it says it is positive, that, that does mean something, okay? Um, and that would be 100% accurate. But when it comes back negative, it doesn't necessarily exclude having Bartonella. So what I have found the best way to figure out if you have Bartonella is to rely on the symptoms. Um, in fact, that's uh, the symptoms and signs. And in fact, that's what a lot of my um, colleagues do that uh, manage um, Bartonella in their practices, okay? So symptoms and signs of Bartonella include day sweats, ongoing anxiety, pain on the soles of the feet, a rash that looks like stretch marks, a large number of swollen lymph nodes, severe thinking problems, seizures or seizure-like disorders, neurologic symptoms of numbness or sh uh, sharp shooting, stabbing or burning type pain, loss of nerve function in a body part, abdominal pain that doesn't have an identifiable cause, probably from swollen lymph nodes in the abdomen, bladder symptoms of pain and urgency, and uh, sometimes severe psychiatric problems. Um, so one of the things that really makes me focus on Bartonella is when I've got somebody that has psychiatric issues like severe anxiety or hallucinations or bad depression, all right? So again, in making a diagnosis, although you may want to do the blood testing, I usually don't recommend it because the IFA, again, doesn't test for enough strains. And we don't really know how accurate the Galaxy Lab enhanced PCR test is at finding it. So it's been my clinical practice to look at what the symptoms uh, tell me. So if you're more, if you have some interest in reading those symptoms or to review more about testing, uh, click on the link to this article in the description for the video.